whilst most of us here use Linux on our home systems, whether that just be for fun or you actively dislike Windows and Mac OS, it's very important to remember that this is a really, really tiny group of people. We have all seen the, at best, very questionable browser market share numbers that indicate OS usage, which aren't super accurate, but give us a general rough idea of the difference. When we are talking about Linux, the real market share is in the business world with things like servers, user terminals, embedded devices, and all manner of other things where you're interacting with Linux every single day and have no idea you're doing so. As such, sometimes changes are made to the kernel where they might be interesting changes, but it's kind of hard to see what value it really has for an average desktop user because oftentimes the change was not made for the average desktop user. It might not even be considering the desktop just full stop. As of kernel 6.9, nice, there is going to be a new kernel build option, USB default authorization mode. This option is pretty straightforward, accepting three different values. So here's what it says. This option allows you to choose whether USB devices that are connected to the system can be used by default or if they are locked down. So this is going to include things like your mouse, your keyboard, a USB thumb drive, a webcam, literally anything you plug into a USB port, which is most things. With value zero, all connected USB devices, with the exception of the root hub, require user space authorization before they can be used. So if you plugged a mouse into the system or a webcam or anything else, that device would not work until it has been authorized. Obviously, that's not the way that most things currently work on Linux. The default value is 1. No user space authorization is required to use connected USB devices. Yes, you might need to mount a file system with a USB thumb drive, but if you plug a keyboard into your system, that keyboard instantly starts working. That right there is a big reason why most of the time we don't use authorization, because if you don't set up things beforehand, you have a situation where your keyboard and your mouse do not work. And that might be a very confusing situation for a user who thinks their computer is now broken. Value 2 works a little bit differently. All connected USB devices, with the exception of internal USB devices, require user space authorization before they can be used. As opposed to option 0, where every single device is rejected in this case, internal ports are automatically accepted. So if you have a computer that is maybe, I don't know, locked in a cabinet somewhere and you want the internal headers to be accepted, this is going to do it. But this one blocks out everything full stop without authorization. Now, this being a build option is new, but this being a feature of the kernel has been around for quite a while, actually. It was a change added back in 2019 with the 5.1 kernel, upstream from a place that you'd be very surprised about from the Chrome OS project. So this build option is the counterpart to the runtime option, USB core.authorized default. And as you would expect from that, it functions in the exact same way. So zero, everything is blocked by default and needs to be authorized. One is the way that you would expect it to work. You plug something in and it just works. And then two, if something is external, it needs to be authorized, but internal devices are automatically accepted. And you might be wondering why a change like that would come from the Chrome OS project, but it's actually quite simple. Now, there's two different explanations here. One of them is very business orientated. The other one is you know, Google being Google. We'll start with Google being Google. If you have a lockdown BIOS and then when things all start up into user space, you want to make sure that things are still locked down and certain kinds of devices cannot interact with the system. Well, this would work out pretty well because then it can be combined with another project called USB Guard. USB Guard is a software framework that helps protect your computer against rogue USB devices by implementing basic whitelisting and blacklisting capabilities based on device attributes. So basically, certain devices can be completely locked out of the system and assuming there isn't an exploit that they are 
you know, exploiting, they just can't do anything. Now, the more friendly interpretation is the kinds of users that actually buy Chromebooks. Typically, they are used in schools. And what do schools not like users doing? Running things that they don't have control of. So if you can just lock out devices by default and then let the admins of that environment manage what can be plugged in, this gives them a lot more control over a managed system. This could be true in a school environment, in a work environment, and any other sort of environment where there might be managed devices. Obviously, this makes sense for what Google is trying to do with Chrome OS, but it also makes a lot of sense in the upstream kernel as well. Remember, a lot of the use cases for Linux aren't just a regular old home desktop computer. A lot of uses are Linux in a device. So the person using that system doesn't think of it as a computer. They are just thinking of it as this is the thing that I use to do an action. Take, for example, a cash register or maybe like a booking system at a front desk, for example. These are computers, but to the person using them, it doesn't matter that it's a computer because they aren't using it like a computer. They are just running this single application. They can't get out of the application. All they can do is use it for its one single operation. But oftentimes, if you just look in a cabinet, there's just a computer sitting there. Now, that means that it's going to have USB ports. Now, a well-designed business is going to make sure the computer is very far away from the customers because oftentimes these devices are used directly in front of customers. If it's not hidden away and maybe there's a USB port in reach, somebody who's a malicious actor might reach over, plug a device in, and do all manner of things. But if that device is just automatically rejected without user space authorization, instantly that attack is just over. Again, obviously there could be an exploit and it doesn't actually stop anything, but assuming it's actually working correctly, that attack just doesn't happen now. Or think about it in other terms. Think about a really dumb hacking movie. It doesn't matter which one it is, they're all really, really stupid. Doesn't mean they're not fun, but they're really dumb. Now, how many of them involve some random dude walking into a data center, plugging a USB device in, and then instantly copying data? The answer is a lot of them. Now, in these situations, clearly the data center isn't doing any sort of USB authorization because... <laughs> <laughs> the USB device just starts copying the data straight away. So clearly, there needs to be some protections put in place. Whoever's the admin of these data centers really needs to lose their job. Obviously, these movies are intentionally ridiculous and in many cases aren't trying to be realistic. But you see my point here. There's no reason whatsoever if you have a business system for random people to be plugging in USB devices and those devices to instantly be authorized. In 99% of cases, that is going to be a bad thing. And when it is not a bad thing, then the admin can make sure that device is properly being authorized. However, there is actually still some value for the regular desktop user as well. Say, for example, you have a laptop and you're the kind of person who likes to go to coffee shops or wherever normal people go if they want to work in public. And you're also the kind of person who likes to leave their device unattended. Well, firstly, stop doing that. You're going to get your device stolen. Secondly, though, is there any reason to just give the opportunity for a random person to plug a device into your system, whether it's someone who's trying to be malicious or if it's one of your friends who thinks they're going to be funny? Because I have had plenty of friends who like to, you know, get involved in my system, start plugging things in, copying files over, adding files in, changing wallpapers, you know, normal things that friends want to do if they want to mess with each other. Well, if you don't want them to mess with you, here's one less way that they can do so. And in the case of a malicious user, if you have your laptop locked, is there any reason why if I plug a device into the system, that device should be authorized? Because if you want to authorize a new device, you're using the device, in which case the device is going to be unlocked. 
I would say in most cases, probably not. And a new device being plugged in on the lock screen probably should just be instantly rejected. Now, considering the direction we're going with the permission system being built on the Linux desktop with things like flat packs and portals and all of these different things, and I know there are a lot of people that just have no interest in using this whatsoever, but for the users who do want it, I would like to see more desktop environments experiment with doing integration with something like USB Guard to easily have a way for users to authorize and unauthorize different devices. Now, I say more desktop environments because one of them actually does have integration, and maybe it won't surprise you. That desktop is GNOME. Now, this was a project back in 2018, and it never really got that much attention after the initial support, so I don't think there's a convenient GUI available to use it. There is the Polkit integration, so it is going to do something, but it's not like it's a core part of the way GNOME works. That actually would be really cool, because this did one of the things that I suggested, where if you're on your lock screen, automatically reject devices, because they don't need to be authorized if the device is locked. As a desktop user, it can be very easy to forget that a lot of the changes made to the kernel aren't really focused on you as a regular user, but instead have more of a corporate use case. However, with a bit of additional work, in some cases, those might still have value to you as well. But I guess that's it for today's video. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly bear, pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and you are no longer authorized to see this video.